Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Cornhole Gear Talk, presented by West Georgia Cornhole and Titan Bags. I am your host, Ben, and I'm with my co-host, Kendall. What's going on, everyone? And Josh. Howdy, howdy. All right, today we are going to be discussing something pretty fun, something a little lighthearted, mm-hmm. something to give us some good ideas. We're going to be talking about the home court, and what I mean by that is the home setup for where you play cornhole. But before we do that, how about we talk about subscribing to the YouTube channel. So do that and hit the little bell icon so you can get notifications for when we come out with a new episode. And then also be sure to follow us on Spotify. So if you can't sit there and watch a video on YouTube, you can listen to it on Spotify on your drive to work while you are working. If you want to waste some time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, But also, whether you realize it or not, you can actually watch the podcast on Spotify, too. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, a neat little feature. Also, Josh, what do we got right right there on the front of the the thing right there? (laughs) Yeah, I do want to bring some attention to the fact that on both West Georgia Cornhole and Titan, uh, you're able to use code GEARTALK at checkout for 5% off your whole order on either website. And you are going to be able to take advantage of that for some of the things we're going to be talking about today. Mm-hmm. So let's jump into this thing and let's have some fun while we do. So the home cornhole court, when I say that, what comes to your mind? For me, it it's kind, of, kind of sucks for me. I do not have one at the moment. Boo. So for me, it's just <laughs> all these dreams and ideas in my head that I'm eager to make happen but for me my i consider my uh home court the the hideaway i'm mm. i live up here basically so that's what i consider mine at the moment yeah yeah i feel like for home courts in general for me it's non-existent uh driveway is crazy sloped it's a little impossible i guess we, we can play in the street we have before um but yeah for the most part it doesn't really exist so i feel like i more so just envision what I would like to do, and then the home court that I do have access to, which is the hideaway. Yeah. Do you and Ben ever play? Just we've played once. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's kind of a big surprise. Yeah, yeah that is kind of surprising. He's never really home. No. So. Yeah, yeah. I guess for me, when I think of the home court, I have just a lot of open space surrounding the house, mm-hmm. but I don't have a designated area. And the funny thing is, is this episode is actually kickstarting my process into building my home court. Ooh, where's it going? So I'm building a fire pit. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a a concrete pad fire pit area. And then just right beside it, I'm going to be doing the cornhole court. Nice. I should should throw over the fire pit. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, that would be, no. Yeah, because it always (laughs) drives me insane. Your front porch is like 23 feet. It's just 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 close enough. (laughs) Just carve out those benches or whatever that you got. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so on my upstairs porch, Mm -hmm. I've got this little tent thing that's sitting up there, and it's the perfect distance for many. Oh. And I can't wait to take full advantage of that. You have a railing up there yet? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Ooh, yeah. That sounds yeah. safer. Yeah. It, <laughs> that, that's been a, a, a labor of love over the past years, making nice. a nice porch up there. But yeah, when I think of a cornhole court, now that we've been in this wild culture of cornhole for some time now, and it's had some time to evolve and develop, I've seen a lot of different oh yeah flavors of home courts oh it is wild yeah and so i put out a little poll last week whether people realized what i was going to do with it or not <laughs> asking <laughs> what some home court setups were like and we saw some pretty cool ones so you got like you know the the boards built up on the decks you've got the concrete pads you've got the the turf layouts mm-hmm. you know a bunch of people got them by their pool just the general backyard. And you got some people that have straight up gone crazy oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah, have yeah. like converted buildings on their property into cornhole arenas. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, feel like you've got like two options. You've got the people who used to just play in their backyard. They had two boards and some grass. Yeah. And then they're like, well, let's just keep adding on to this over and over and over. Um, no matter how crazy it gets, you can see where that seed started. And there's oh, yeah. other people who just scrapped it all and built something <laughs> completely new and solely for cornhole. Yeah, like it's interesting because like you have almost two camps that Mm -hmm. have developed over time. Like you've got the people that 
still just kind of play leisurely, mm -hmm. but they want it to be nice. Yeah. yeah. And they play enough that, you know, they're going to have a good time and spend some money mm -hmm. on making their cornhole area really nice. Yeah. yeah. But then you've got these other other folks that are like, this is life. Yeah. This is more than just a fun backyard game. This is where we do business. I feel like it's almost like those people who set up like golf in their backyard with one or two holes, and then there's people who get the like the full digital, simulator. Yeah. yeah, in, in their the basement. in their basement. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it's like almost like those two people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some of those setups we were seeing on the Facebook page. I mean, it looked like a dedicated sports arena. Yeah. It was so impressive. I mean, some of them, I'm, I'm like, are you running a business out of this thing? <laughs> like, you know, are you charging people to come here? Because mm -hmm. how else did you pay for all this yeah. stuff? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, we'll uh, stick around to the end because we're going to start going through <laughs> a lot of these different uh, setups that I saw throughout the week. So let's talk about the evolution of the home cornhole court. Mm -hmm. Right. No, we uh funny story, we um we got a place in Florida and it was about the time I started getting to Cornhole and we had this area down below, you know, stilted house down in Florida, so we had this area down below. We had dreams of it, you know, outdoor kitchen, all of this. <laughs> well, uh I just purchased the fourth piece in completing my cornhole court for a place in Florida and it mm -hmm. has taken over the outdoor kitchen area now. What, what was the fourth piece? Um it would be a score mate. Oh, a single nice. score mate. Yeah, still haven't gotten the board yet, but I got the score mate. Oh, that's pretty important. How do you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How exactly do you have a cornhole court without the cornhole boards? Still lugging mine back and forth right now. You're just staying around, <laughs> drinking around the score mate. <laughs> yeah, just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if we yeah, were playing right now? Okay? You yeah, used to occasionally up the score on Scoreholio <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> yeah, we went uh, went a little backwards on that one, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. The the evolution before, you know, we first got that place and, we were, you know, the, oh, this is going to be an outdoor kitchen when you just throw the cornhole boards out there in the yard, you know, set up a score mate. We'll have a good time. And now the family's gotten into it. You know, I've gotten like very deeply into it. And now we're talking about just we're going all in. We're getting everything now, we can. Now, when you pads. say we... Who are you referring to? My entire family. Okay, well, I was about to say we do not have a place in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's uh, it's my family. They, my dad, he's recently really gotten into it. He started coming up here to the, some of the blind draws and everything. Uh, my girlfriend's really into it now. My grandfather, he uh, picked a couple bags up the other day. He enjoyed it. So we're going all in, and it's uh, I think it's gonna be really nice. Nice. Well, speaking of not having boards, <laughs> <laughs> the first step, Kendall is having boards. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's the issue. And in the evolution of the home court, I mean, it used to just be, hey, we're going to throw some boards out on the back lawn and hope that it's level. Yep. Mm -hmm. And play a few games. Yep. You yeah. Know? May not even be 27 feet. <laughs> yeah. Ha have, a, have a few drinks, throw some bags that had corn in them. Maybe if you were lucky, you had like gravel. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or that weird chalk stuff. I don't know if you've oh, seen yeah. those. Oh, yeah, those, those it just those clouds whenever it hits the have board. Have you guys ever played w the, with the bags that have, like, the gravel in them? Oh, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? We yeah. replaced one of our uh, bags of gravel because our corn was uh, rotted with, like, out. actual gravel? Oh, yeah. We cut it open, put some gravel in there, sewed it back Driveway out. gravel or, like, fish tank gravel? It was, like, pea gravel. Okay. It's kind of in the middle. Okay. okay. Well, pea, yeah, pea gravel, that's not terrible. We okay. crushed it up a little bit. I was picturing like a total of like nine rocks <laughs> in this one bag. <laughs> Just some big old chunks of yeah. quartz in there. Yeah, that would not be good. Yeah, I, I was um, up in North Carolina, and I'm not going to name the brewery, but shame on them. They had some bags that were like that thick but filled with tiny rocks. Mm. And I picked it up. I'm like, I don't even, even want to play with this. You could hurt like, somebody with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it hurts everything it hurts my feelings <laughs> but anyway beside the point so you got to have boards yeah right yeah, and that's yeah. that's how everybody started out like mm -hmm. you've got the boards you put them out in the backyard you know every now and then you've got like the somebody putting the flip flop under the front oh, of the yeah. board you know what i'm talking about yep, to get yep, it level yep. and everything um but eventually like things started to move in different directions right People are out there playing, and they're like, you know what? We need some kind of convenient way to keep score. Yep. And so people started 
buying these like score tower things. Mm -hmm. Like I think back to the first time that I ever saw a score tower. And this was, I mean, there were like two companies that made them. Um, and it was like a PVC pipe yep. yeah. fixture thing and had like these little flip cards on it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I remember sitting out, we were playing after one of the days at work on Friday and I'm like flipping this thing. I'm like, I really wish I had a place to put my drink. Yep. <laughs> so I got like this plastic, crappy plastic cup holder thing, <laughs> drilled a couple of holes and zip tied it. Nice. <laughs> to yeah. the, the thing. So I had a cup holder and we all just kind of like looked at each other. We're like, we have like all the capabilities in the world to make something that's way better than this. <laughs> yep. And well, that's, that's how the score mate was born. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, we, we started making the score mate and eventually, like, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but you, you just don't hardly ever go to any serious cornhole player's house and they don't have a scoring system. Yeah. I oh mean, yeah, it's essential. for sure. Like yeah, it, yeah. it's a staple now. Yeah. Especially now with Score Holio and the introduction oh, yeah. of all the tablets and stuff, having mm -hmm. a place to hold them. I mean, it's if you go somewhere and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna play some cornhole," and you pull up and there's not a uh, there's not a tablet with Score Holio on top of a score. <laughs> you mate. know what kind of people you're playing? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You, you might want to just turn around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I'm about to win all mm -hmm. of this. Yeah, <laughs> but then occasionally, like you'll get the crazy old guy who like never goes anywhere but just stays home and throws by himself, mm -hmm. and then like. He doesn't have any of the gear, but he will destroy you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? You ever run into any of those? I haven't. Oh, God. Me personally, I have not. But so I they're picturing imagine. him with like a notepad keeping track of score in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, no. He, he just keeps it in his head and he tells mm. you when you're wrong and you have to obey. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. my gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. But yeah, like the, <laughs> the score mates and like score towers, they became a huge staple yeah. in the whole thing. And and then like the next step in the evolution was well we're out here having a you know a barbecue throw it in the backyard and it's starting to get dark. Well, you need some lights, mm -hmm. and you know having the floodlights on your house. I, I guarantee if you've done this before, leave a comment. But have you turned the floodlights on your house to a certain spot? so that you can see better when oh, you yeah. play. Oh, and then it occasionally goes out and you got to dance around a little bit <laughs> yeah. if you haven't been moving enough to keep it on. Yep. It's so like, we were like, hey, let's put put lights on the score mates. Mm -hmm. That'll make it a lot easier. Yeah. So you can get score mates with LED lights that are rechargeable. You can take them off, put them on, do whatever you want with them. Mm -hmm. And that, that helps out a lot. And everybody had this same it was almost like the same progression at the same time with the culture across like with facebook and all the social media things linking everything together everyone immediately was like yeah we have to have the boards and then the the scoring system yeah but then people started getting way more serious with it they're like well we're gonna have a dedicated spot in mm -hmm. our yards yeah. mm -hmm. because i'm sure everybody who has done this They've they've had they have the like grass ruts. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm talking yeah, yeah. about? You're like, you know what? This is this is just the permanent spot for cornhole. Mm -hmm. We have these little mud puddles every time it rains. You know, you just got a little trench here. How about we build a deck? Yeah. And we make it look nice. Yeah. You started seeing people, you know, post up some like four by fours or six by sixes, and they built a little deck right where the boards go. And that was that was one trend, but Here's the thing. Right when people really started getting serious, a big divide happened. And I noticed this divide taking a, a progression throughout time where you've got the people that are saying, bring it inside. Mm. And then there are the people that are like, no, this is a backyard sport. Yeah. We're, we're going to hang out outside and mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still know there are definitely a few people who still prefer outside, especially if it's leisure play, like casual play. Then I feel like I get it. I do. Yeah. Um, I'll always prefer indoors. But oh, I yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think just because of the way that my competitive nature operates, yes. I like to have consistency. Mm -hmm. Yes. And playing outside, it brings a new element of fun. Mm hmm but not as much consistency for the sport itself. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I feel like had to have been a lot of the initial motivation for innovate, innovative ideas of like the new decks and the new like leveling the boards as much as it's, it's nice and it's a way to, you know, keep your expensive equipment clean and, you know, in better condition. But there's also, you know, 
when you and cousin Timmy are getting real competitive over the past, you know, <laughs> six months, eventually, you know, some person's going to complain like, oh, well, it's because the board was leaning this way. It was mm -hmm. leaning that way. And it's going to be people trying to get rid of all those variables. Mm -hmm. I feel like outside is just a completely get different game, too. I feel like some of those guys yeah. oh, that, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest thing, the wind. Yeah. Like, I was, when I started playing, I started playing in the shop. And I'd never played outside apart from, like, tailgates, you know, just having fun. And we did a tournament. <laughs> We did a tournament out. Where was that tournament? It was a, it was a benefit tournament. It was in a field somewhere. Anyways, it was somewhere in Douglasville. We the did Fox that. Hall thing. No, it wasn't the Fox Hall. It may have been. Either either, either way, way. Uh, we get out there, and I'm playing with my normal doubles partner, and we pull up for our first our first round, and I'm throwing against a uh, a four year old, maybe five, and he he's not good. It's a charity I event. I remember this now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a charity event. So, you know, there's a bunch of people who haven't played before right. just want to support the cause. I think this kid made two on the board the entire time and he outscored me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that <laughs> wind was so bad. I would either I would throw it up and the wind would catch it and it would stop short or the wind would catch it and it would fly off the back every single time. That's why I feel like. Spencer's throwdown is such a coin toss. Oh yeah, because oh, it's yeah. so windy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I even had people complaining on our live feed about how many times we mentioned the wind <laughs> because we mentioned it so much. Yeah, like it was insanely windy. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, that's one of the factors too. Like, wind is is a huge ordeal. But then all the people up north are probably laughing at us, saying <laughs> it's the cold. Yeah, yeah, that, that's. A major thing. I know Lavar. He's talking about it all the time. He's in a garage and he's still got heaters, like four <laughs> or five different heaters going, keeping his hands warm so he can even play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's talk about this split, the inside versus outside, and let's let's take a, a look at some photographs and mm. see what kind of stuff we collected this week. So the first thing, the typical genre that you see, is the guys who bring it. In the garage, mm -hmm. let's let's check out this garage shot. So Ooh, speaking of familiar, LeVar, familiar. Yeah, <laughs> speaking of Lavar, this is Lavar's garage that he is in the process of converting into his cool little cornhole arena. I like the the glass doors. So bringing a little bit of the inside outside kind of yeah. combo that you got going on there. Mm -hmm. So you know, if it's a nice day, hey, open up the doors. Yeah, for sure. Hey, let let some. Uh, let some nice weather in. Or if you're wanting to grill out, you kind of have that, you know, yeah. easy to travel in and out. Just take a couple of steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good to go. Yep. You bring the grill inside. So, yeah, <clears throat> you got the garage, and then you've got the tent. Mm. Now, a greenhouse. This is something I've been seeing a lot more of lately. Mm -hmm. Mostly yeah. the uh, the RV tents is yeah, what dude, I'm seeing I, a lot. I've the RV that. and boat tents and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The really tall boy things. Mm -hmm. I would be so scared to have one of those. Mm -hmm. Really? Like, talking about the wind, man. Yeah. Like, you really get a, a nice gust going, yeah, I'd be kind of scared. <laughs> I saw it saw the other day. It was a small RV tent. It was just completely encased in snow. Oh, gosh. Like, they had to, like, shovel it to get in the door. Oh, oh my gosh. goodness. Yeah, not for me. Yeah, so this one, this one's a little bit of a an interesting combo mm -hmm. because it's inside slash outside. Yeah. And you've got the whole deck situation going on inside this tent. Mm. But it's not an actual building. It's kind of like your your hybrid, your halfway. Yeah. yeah. That's really, really nice. Now that I'm taking a second look at it, that is actually really nice. Mm -hmm. So, and the fact that you're able to set up for two lanes. I'm curious if, because it almost seems like the material on the left side is different than the right. And so I'm curious if that either retracts or if you're able to lift it up. If you do mm. want it to be a little bit more Ooh, indoor, outdoor. Really nice. I'm curious. That would actually be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those of you that are listening and not watching, we're taking a look at some some photographs that we procured off of the interwebs this week. We're looking at the inside of a large. It seems like a, a just home constructed tent with yeah. tarping. It and vaguely stuff. resembles like a greenhouse. In my yeah, opinion. like the yeah yeah like a greenhouse but with tarp walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've got like the garage guys, the tent guys, but then you start getting a little bit more. Labor intensive, mm. and you switch over to like the pole barn and metal outbuilding guys. Yeah. So this is a pole barn that somebody converted, 
And I mean, this just, at this point, you might as well just call this a cornhole venue. Yeah, this, you have your own private venue. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a bowling alley in your basement, essentially, yeah, exactly. is what you have. Exactly. Yeah. This yeah. is the one I, I saw, and I was like, wow. Yep. Is that, like, like you were saying, does he rent that out? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got, like, the finished walls, and then you've got these little cubbies that are cut into the walls where I'm assuming you put tablets. Mm-hmm. Tablets, drinks. I was say, that'd be really convenient for drinks, tablets. just to be able to tuck it in the wall right behind you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, I think I do see a little cup holder there under the little number two box. Yeah, it does mm-hmm. look like it. But, I mean, he's got several lanes set up in here. How many is it? I'm trying to figure out what the floor is made out of. At least six. there's six present that we can see. That's impressive. Got nice red carpet on mm-hmm. either side. I mean, mm-hmm. this is like a legit setup. Oh, yeah. And another big thing about setups like this, with those that carpet, like you were saying, you're not pulling a rope every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know where your boards are going. Mm-hmm. You walk up that you walk out there, you throw them down and you play cornhole. That's yep. really convenient. Let's see what we got next. Yeah. So this that's another pole barnish setup. And I'm telling you, dude, those stripes, I love that. Yeah, that that's looks good. This I looks like, I like so a much. brewery or something. Yeah, this, this looks, looks nice. That's fancy. Yeah, that's that that one's sick. Okay, now we're inside the house. Mm. You got the basement set up. Yep. So I I think I would lose my mind. Yeah, it's a little chaotic. Because I would hit the ceiling like every time yeah. I threw in this place. It'll make you adjust your throw. I don't want to adjust my throw because then I, I might get better. That's <laughs> <laughs> what happened to me. I used to throw a high, lofty, fast bag. Now I throw low and slow. It was because I was playing in a basement. But in the long run, like you said, I think it helped me. All right, now this next picture, I think this one might be my favorite on the list. I, mm. as simple as this is, Ooh. I freaking love this. The guy has a, a nook in his house. He's got the, what do you call this, the click lock flooring stuff? Yeah, it's like almost like from like a gym. Yeah. yeah. Um, they use it at the on the ACL main stages too. But dude, I love this setup. And it's like this whole little cove in his house. Was just made for it. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I was going to ask. I was like, is this, did he frame and do this intentionally? <laughs> yeah. Did he just buy this house? Like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do with this weird long room. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which of the kids gets stuck with this weird room. That might have been the selling point. You that never know. True. It's looking like Hey Arnold's room. <laughs> we're going <laughs> to start, we're gonna start having like architects like designing houses. I mean, like, okay, where's the cornhole room? I yeah. mean, it's getting to that point, I feel like, with pool tables. People design <laughs> yeah, basements all the time yeah. with like the size and mind of a pool table and being able to have that reach around it. So, I mean, it could. Yeah. Um, but I really appreciate this room because you can tell it is almost kind of like that person's specific kind of like training dojo. Almost yeah. like it's not like this big arena for parties. He's not, you know, packing out 16 people in this room. I hope not. Oh God. <laughs> and um, but it just seems like truly like that's where he masters his craft. That's where mm-hmm. he's practicing in this specific one area. And I don't know. I really appreciate that. It's like if you do have 16 people. <laughs> that are in here it's like all right everybody let's just lay on the floor in between the boards and <laughs> you know maybe you won't get hit yeah so i i think that one's definitely cool mm-hmm. all right but so you've got the the inside people and of course we, we all know like jay rubin practices in his house yeah. I'm, I'm not too sure if you could actually play a game with his setup i don't, I don't know is there a board on the other end yeah i, mean, I think i think there I is Typically, I, there's not, I, but I, I think, think you probably is. could. I think he just has it taped off on the ground, like Maybe. where a board would be. Gotcha. Because um, I know he's like standing next to a couch. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Move the couch. We'll have to have him to. on one day and break yeah, down we'll, his ridiculous we'll to, playing situation. Yeah. We'll have to ask about that. So you got the guys who brought it inside, but then you've got the folks who kept it outside. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of different things that people have done to, quote unquote, innovate the backyard scene so you've got the cornhole decks that people Mm, have done yep that's very classic yeah i this is the direction that like i thought about going several years ago Mm -hmm. until i decided that i was just going to pour some concrete pads for stuff yeah and i've intentionally designed my lane in such a way that if cornhole i say if and lord i hope (laughs) cornhole never goes out of style because this is my livelihood yeah um I could repurpose those foundations as little sheds. No, mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, but 
I like the deck thing a lot, mm -hmm. especially I, I love this one in particular because you've got the what, what what is this stuff? The true deck is that what it's called? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got the the nice you know all weather synthetic decking material, but you got two different colors. Yeah, mm. that's that does look. Oh nice. yeah, so it does measure it out, and they kind of know the. You've play got area. where the nice. board goes. Yeah, yeah. And I just think that's really cool. I and never he's got his of that. own posted up scoring and cup holder bracket that looks like it's anchored into the ground. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this is a super legit setup. I think this is awesome. I think this is one of the more popular ways that people are going now. Yeah, I mean, it's if you if you know what you're doing with a little little saw and hammer, you can. It's not that difficult to do. It's not super Before expensive. Before we move, I'll give a small hot take. Uh, okay. Because obviously, I see the decks all the time, and sometimes one they're raised, and I have a little bit of beef with the raised decks. Because one, if you throw <laughs> a bag short. You're having to get down to get mm. this bag. I feel like it's just a little ridiculous. Well, I think you're one of the few that has that problem, Josh. That's true. That is true. <laughs> or the people who have like this same situation and like this is fine. But when you can tell there's just like the Grand Canyon in between the two oh, decks yeah. and there's just a lot going on, that I don't know why I can't but stand see, it. But see, that's but that's one of I the I hope you don't like playing singles. But <laughs> oh, like, I'm just like <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> You're gonna get your elevation gain in for the day for yeah. sure. Yeah. Zip line between the boards. Yeah. yeah Problem but solved. Like one of the things though with this that's beautiful is that if you truly have a yard that has horrible grading. Mm-hmm. I mean, this solves the problem. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I definitely see it. I mean, I mean, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, me personally, this is pretty much our only solution. Our our backyard, I mean, it's such a steep grade. Yeah, that's, our, our yard is wild. That's yeah. our solution. That's the way we'd have to go if we mm -hmm. wanted a home court. Now, see, you could build an entire deck, the entire length yeah. of the court. That'd be kind of cool. That's what we've been considering, just knocking it's off the like back side of the Maybe like a 10-foot by 40-foot deck. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that point, just extend your normal porch, have a little cornhole section. Yeah, I mean, I I legit thought about extending building your porch. wings on my porch. Yeah, just for that reason. You got the room on the right side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Probably I got it on happen. both sides. Be yeah. super easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, what do we got next? I think we got another deck set up here. Yeah. Yeah. So that one's got a little walking path. It's got lights. Yeah. yeah. The built in lights. That's nice. The, the reason why I like this one so much was for the light setup that they yeah. had. Mm. That's nice. I particularly like it <clears throat> because it's got the lamps that go straight down. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so the light is not shining in yes. your eyes yes. when yes. you're yes. trying to yes. throw. Yep. Yep. Game changer out there. Uh, yeah. I mean, not the bag. <laughs> well, there is a game there changer. There could be. There is. Uh -oh. That is a game changer. Ooh, wow. <laughs> uh, Wooey. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like I love the the simple fact that like this isn't the most complicated setup in the world, mm -mm. but it's exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean like, that's everything you need to even throughout the night have a good time. Yeah. yeah you're gonna be able to done. play year round as long as it's not raining. And you got look, it, it's hard to see it in this picture, but right here at the front left. You got two rows of cup holders mm. on each side. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's legit. All right, so you go from the decks. Oh, there's another deck. Mm. I, I liked this walkway. Nice. I thought I that like, was. Yeah, yeah, I do like that one. This one's very presentable and put together. And then you got a little box garden in the middle. That's what. Yeah, that's, that's cool. One like, thing I was gonna add is I do feel like the people who do the decks and the outdoor outdoor stuff, those people I feel like lean towards the entertainer type people. Yeah. Who mm -hmm. bring people over? It's more because like even if you have a barn, there's it's only cornhole that's gonna be going on in that barn. Uh, but with this, you can have a multitude of other things. It's easier if you have kids. They're running around doing their own thing while you got cornhole going on over to the side. And look at that. They got little benches built yeah. in. You can sit down. Oh, That's mm. cool. That's really cool. Yeah, good job on this guy, except for the New York board. I feel like that is mm. the... Oh, my. <laughs> I do feel like that's the next step of the uh, cornhole setup is chairs. Mm. Mm. I haven't really seen that a lot. Mm. I'm tired of standing. Yeah. Okay, now we're moving on. Shout out to uh, Ooh, King's wow. Throne here. But this is some some poured pad business going on. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is you're getting to the point here where you're dedicated. Yeah, oh. Even the photo of this is impressive. Yeah, yeah like you're, you're getting <laughs> very, nice. very dedicated with what is going on with your landscape. Oh yeah. yeah, this yeah. isn't this isn't your furry backyard player. They brought the laser out for this bad boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
and and these guys they've gone beyond even just having the poured concrete pad like they they got the launch pads yep they've got the stand lights although the lights aren't permanent and they've just got a nice little backyard venue almost mm -hmm. and this is the kind of setup where you've got your competitive outdoor players and you're bringing people together so you can play i mean you can have a decent number of people playing on three lanes mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Right? oh yeah, yeah yeah and have some legit tournaments yeah mm -hmm. at your house now i think that this is a really cool setup what do we got next oh the turf domain mm. So this is this is one area that I've kind of had some reservations with. I think this would mess with my depth perception, I feel like. I don't yeah, know why. Two different color greens. Yeah, <laughs> and then looking at the like hard stop on one side, then I'm assuming the transition is smoother on the other side. I don't know. See, this is the combination between like a turf area and your deck system. Mm -hmm. Because and this is this is another one of those things where where the decks come in handy yeah. because you've got a yard that obviously is not going to work. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so you build the platforms, you get it level, and even though it slopes multiple ways, now we have a good playing surface, but sorry, Josh, you're going to have to like take large steps oh, down. It's, <laughs> it's awful. It's yeah. awful. I really like this next one. This one's cool. Check that out. Ooh. Oh, that is nice. First of all, their yard is fantastic. Yeah, good, good job, guys. Yeah. Good job. But you got what looks to be like pieces of an old football field turf. Mm -hmm. And one set of cornhole boards. Looks looks like they it still uh, have a set. That's <laughs> <laughs> looks like everything got shifted a little bit. No, I think those are our boards. Looks oh. like it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that looks super simple, but very nice at the same time. Yeah, very I feel well like especially put with some lights. I feel like that would look amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've got a level enough area and you want a more permanent fixture. I, I like the, the idea that they went here mm -hmm. with here. I think it looks cool. All right. So what do we have next? I like I this one. I feel like I've seen this one before. That I, one's really nice. I have seen this one yeah. before. Yeah, this is another one of those. You had some fun with the landscaping situations. Mm -hmm. Like you got your your nice gravel in the middle in case, you know, you need to replace some corn. <laughs> in your bags, you can put that in there. <laughs> You're in a pickle. <laughs> yeah, but you've got you know nice little turf pads on the end. I'm assuming that it's a poured concrete pad under the turf. I'm not sure. I would assume. I mean, I guess there's trim, but I can't tell if it's wood or not. But you've got the the benches on the back. You've got the lights all the way around. I mean, this is just awesome. I even love the fence on the side with the uh, you've got the all banners. the banners on there. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure. I like the stepping stones. I hate stepping I'm, stones. I'm undecided about that. I'm not yeah. a big fan. I think the stepping stepping stones for me depends on if that is just loose gravel in the middle or if it's any form of cement or any if, if it's stable, I think I'm fine with it. Yeah, you get a little piece of gravel up on that stepping stone. You don't see it and you're barefooted. No, oh, no. good luck. I just don't like stepping stones because I'm tall. I have a huge stride. Mm -hmm. and They're never spaced out correctly. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awful. Yeah, if, if I did stepping stones, they'd be like, Five feet apart. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, this is where we hail from. Ooh. So this is the hideaway. This is what we were referring to as our home court yep. earlier. Old Faithful. Yeah. It has really, really spoiled me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It has completely changed <laughs> my opinions of when I want to play cornhole. Right. Yeah. Where there's like, hey, we may throw the boards out in the driveway. I'm like, oh. Yeah, sure. Oh, I right. guess. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be slightly unlevel. Yeah, and, and then it, it's humid. also like we could just drive twenty five minutes. Yep. Mm -hmm. you know? Just go to the hideaway. Yep. So, the hideaway, it's, it's like you said. I mean, we're definitely very spoiled, but it has become more than just a place to play cornhole. It's mm -hmm. become a hub of culture. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, that a lot of people from the community, like um, companies will rent it out and churches will rent it out. It's just a place where people can come have a good time. Oh, yeah. But also you can be competitive with Cornhole if you want to play in the leagues and everything, but you can also just come have a good time with your friends and coworkers and family. Mm -hmm. And I, mean, I love that element about Cornhole is that it's 
beyond just a sport. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not like you're out there playing tetherball in your backyard. <laughs> Y'all know what tetherball is? Oh, I absolutely. Love tetherball. Okay, absolutely. Good. I was worried. Yeah, it's not like you're just out there playing tetherball where nobody's really just making friends playing <laughs> yeah, tetherball. Yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making yeah. enemies <laughs> playing tetherball, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have gotten hit so hard in the face. <laughs> I have hit people so hard in the face. Yeah. But it's it's like this epicenter. And when you have those spaces, when you dedicate a place like that in your yard, people want to come do things at your house, yep. yeah. at yep. your place. Like, hey, man, can we do, you know, can we grill out this weekend over at your place? We want to play some cornhole, have a good time. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, like, I've noticed that in oh, the past. Yeah. It's like, even though, like, I'm so deep into the cornhole world, I haven't gotten my home court set up. But one of my buddies, he's got a home court set up. And we find ourselves going to his house to hang out mm-hmm. when we want to play cornhole. Yeah, it's not that is my, true. Yeah, if you're yeah. tired of hanging out at Steve's house and you want to have stuff at your house, set up your cornhole area. Yeah. Level it up. Yeah, get it set up. So speaking of that, segue, how can you improve your home court setup? Now, there's two things. You can go the route of we're going to go nuts. Yep. And secondly, we got to be balling on a budget. Yeah. I think the second's going to be the most common, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I think the same way with the ingenuity of all of Cornhole, I feel like it's obviously going to start with your boards. And I would say we're assuming here that you're at least on a Pro Set or an X Factor or somewhere in there. Because mm-hmm. I feel like if you're, you know, on a little bit more of a DIY Cornhole set, I would maybe fix that first before mm-hmm. getting a bunch of lights and score towers. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think balling on a budget or just being creative in general is going to be the most common, what people are going to be looking for. Well, firstly... Ask on Facebook. Oh, for sure. Just ask around. See what other people have done. You're probably going to get some good ideas. Yeah, yeah you like, will, 100%. I've been in this for a long time, and even looking at stuff from my polls I put out there, I learned some stuff Oh yeah. that I'm going to change about what my initial plans were for my well, arena. Invite 10 people over and ask them why they're having a bad time, and <laughs> just try and fix it slowly. Yeah, that's <laughs> not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> why is it dark? <laughs> we need some lights. Yeah, yeah I which hate I've, that it's dark. I honestly <laughs> feel like even... Maybe not before a score tower, but right there with the score tower. Or if you order from us, you can just get it at the same time, yeah. is the lighting. Yeah. That's yeah. that's yeah. big thing for me. We used to play at a bar right downtown, and it was there for a while. We had somebody bringing in this big, big light spring in there, and it was fine. Now they don't have lights, mm-hmm. and I just I can't do it. Yeah. I can't see the other board. I yeah, because you can always hole. just prop your phone up somewhere if you really mm-hmm. need to. Like, the score towers are great as long as they're – a score mate and they function as a drink holder as well mm-hmm. um or they can hold your phone tablet etc but i would say for a quick purchase i would go with lights is the first yeah. thing yeah it's yeah. huge yeah and so i listed out a couple of things here that are some good ways so improve your board setup like if you've got bad boards yeah that's that's priority number one, number one. Yep. Yep. um second thing maybe other people don't think about this but you mentioned it a few episodes ago, mm. and I'd never really thought of this. Have some courtesy house bags. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's you know, the it, main reason I want to get some, like, some thrashers and some dozers especially. Yep. I think, yeah, having great courtesy bags for not just people who also play a lot of cornhole and they may just be stopping by and they don't have their stuff with them, but it's easy for you to, you know, introduce new people to cornhole. Because if they have the great arena, they want to be able to appreciate it the same way you do. Yeah. So, so yeah, get, get some, like, courtesy house bags that are not like terrible corn or gravel filled bags. <laughs> no. Don't do that. And then of course the um the score mate or the score tower get you something that you can easily keep score on so that there's no bickering, arguing, all mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Um now quick sales pitch. I am going to say go buy the score mate because if you try to build one yourself in most cases, you're probably going to spend the same amount or more. Yeah trying to make one yourself when you could get one that's printed has cool graphics on it yep. and can hold a tablet and can hold your drinks and all that stuff so. and designed to where you can take it apart and it's collapsible right. for storage because if it's you do portable. do it easily yourself i'm assuming you're just screwing everything together yeah and it's just going to be this giant you know yeah so yeah get get some score mates um we also have the drink mates too so you can have a scorekeeper on one end and then just a drink holder on the other and there are upgrades for mm-hmm. led lights to have mm-hmm. Uh, lighting, but I guess kind of a weird thing for me to say, but like invest in some really high quality lighting too, 
because sometimes I even the products that we've done with the scoremate lighting, which that's another upgrade that we're going to be doing to that at some point. Um, I, I I have to have more light. Yeah. I mean, I suck. <laughs> but <laughs> for so. me, that scoremate light's actually really nice. But it's it's enough for me as long as I can see the hole, I'm good. But <laughs> oh <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna. I'm saying I'm gonna be good, but I'm gonna want to play. Just pitch black with LEDs around the hole. That's <laughs> yeah. it. You're good. If I can see the hole, I will play. Oh God, <laughs> right. just playing putt putt at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you've got the the pitch mats. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another thing. And look, we talked about it at the beginning of the episode right here. Use code Gear Talk for five percent off. You can get discounts on all this stuff for watching the show. Yeah, it's crazy. A lot um, of our pitch pad designs have been upgraded too. They're yeah. fresh. Oh yeah, and that's another thing people don't think about with our pitch pads. Not only are they huge convenience, you know, keeping your board still, something soft to stand on, but they upgrade the look of your setup. Oh, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah. I mean, you go back to that one that we just saw with King's throwing. Like those were our launch pads, mm-hmm. and like they look ridiculously cool. It's not just some sad generic carpet or turf that yeah. you get from Home Depot. Yeah. Like, it's something that was made for the game of Cornhole. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it looks good. Mm-hmm. It also keeps your bags from getting ripped up. And That's dirty. the main... Yeah, just dirty. That's the main yeah. thing for me. It's because just dirty bags really bother me. <laughs> and so I end up having to... Just which made me think of the company. Dirty yeah. Bags. <laughs> I mean... Um, <laughs> Ooh. Um, but I feel like having to clean them constantly, you're just breaking in your bag over and over and over. Yeah. So I would just, yeah, please get launch pads or some other clean area. Yep, yep. So what are some of the things that you guys think, as far as constructing an area, not products to buy, but constructing mm-hmm. a cornhole area in your backyard or in a building, in your basement, in your house, what are some of those things you can do that you think would be good? I think for me personally, where my mind goes to where I, I guess maybe not easy because it obviously depends on what you have access to, but leveling up the garage, I think is the best first because I'm a mm-hmm. big fan of indoors. And I think playing indoors, like that one guy who had his weird long room that was just perfect for cornhole, not everybody's going to have that. And they're not always going to have the ceiling height that you need. Mm. Uh, but the likelihood of having that ceiling height in a garage is a little bit more likely. Um, and so that's what I would do first is leveling up a garage. My, If I had the choice, it would be, you know, a nice little garage setup, something that's, you know, it's separated from the house, but it's indoors. I can do what I want in there. I got plenty of room for multiple lanes. Like that would be that would be my dream. My initial and I guess it all kind of goes back to like what are you trying to accomplish? Like mm-hmm. if you've got the space to build like a, a covered carport pole barn kind of thing, yeah. mm-hmm. um, you know, that's that's an investment, but it could be a multi purpose type thing yeah. where mm-hmm. you can park your cars under it, mm-hmm. but then you can back them out, put a grill in there put your cornhole boards out, you know, do all kinds of things that way. That was one of my early initial ideas that I wanted to do, but I can't afford it. So, yeah. But like some of the the more simple solutions, like the whole deck situation. Yeah. Like I said, for us, that's pretty much, that's my only solution. Yeah. We're so, our yard is so steep and it's just, that'll be the quickest, easiest thing to do, Mm -hmm. cheapest thing to do. And so it's a great solution. Like it'll still, We'll still be able to play. It'll still be fun to play. So that's what we're going to wind up going with. Yeah. Well, in the comments, let us know what we missed because I would really like to hear from you about what kind of ideas you have that you have come up with yourself or you've seen somewhere else for a really cool cornhole court. And honestly, this is all just a ploy so that I can get ideas for my whole cornhole court. Mm. So. <laughs> that I'm going to start using. <laughs> get to work all right well thanks everybody for watching be sure to like this video and subscribe on youtube and follow us on spotify use our coupon code gear talk gear talk for five percent off of your next order on westgeorgiacornhole.com or the titan website and you can get your launch pads score mates drink mates x factor boards all the all the good stuff that you need so thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next time